Hey everyone, John Bella here. Thank you so much for joining me. Today I wanted to take a look at async await in JavaScript. Before we dive into async await and what it is and, and how it works, I think it's best we start with a little bit of a history lesson. Prior to promises and prior to async await, the way that we handled asynchronous operations in JavaScript is through the pattern you see here on your screen. It's known as callbacks. Callbacks were a way of passing functions to other functions so that when the first function is completed, the second one is called. As you can imagine, that led to what you see here, which is nested callbacks, so functions inside of functions inside of functions, what's known as callback hell, or the Christmas tree of doom, or the pyramid of doom, or any other not-so-loving names. In ES6 in 2015, we received native support for promises, and that was a huge boon for JavaScript developers. Promises are a concept where uh, a promise represents the eventual success or failure of an asynchronous operation. So when you call a promise, you get, if you were to console log it immediately, you get promise pending. Once that function has resolved or rejected successfully or in error, then you get a response. So what you can do is you can chain those responses, as you see here, with the then keyword. So here on line two, we called the function called do thing one. Once do thing one has resolved or rejected, we can move on. If it resolves or is a successful operation, we move on to the then keyword on line three. And then we pass the, the return value from thing one into do thing two. Then once that promise resolves, we move on to line four, where we have then do thing three. If at any point in this promise chain, a function or promise resolve, or sorry, a promise is rejected, we move on to the catch block. This represented a big change in the way that we do asynchronous programming. It's a much cleaner way, but there are still some issues with nesting and debugging nested promises and the way that promise chains can kind of get a little bit out of hand at times. So in ES 2017, we received async await. And async await is a great way of writing JavaScript, asynchronous JavaScript in a way that more closely models the synchronous nature of the rest of the language. So you can imagine that we can write synchronous looking asynchronous code. So let's see what that looks like. Let's first create a function called get data. This function here is just going to return a promise. It's going to either resolve or reject. It's going to be an arrow function. And then we're just going to call set timeout. And then what we can do is resolve this promise with the word two. And then we'll take two seconds there. So now we can create an async function called app, which will console log one, then console log get data, console log three. Can you see the issue here? Well, let's take a look. Oh, it helps if we call it. You can see we have our promise pending. That's because we haven't awaited the result of get data. So let's await it. You can see in the console that our exec the execution of our application pauses while that promise resolves. And that happens before we move on and console log the word three. So async await is essentially a combination of promises and generator functions. Generator functions are functions that can pause their execution and then return to that function in exactly the same spot and continue execution. So now let's take a look at promise-based code and how we could refactor that to use async await. So let's use this example. Let's say we have a function here 
called promises. And we can say return do operation, then take our value called do operation two, then, oh, it helps if we pass that value in, do operation three. And now we can handle that, any errors by console logging them. So now let's refactor that to use async await. So first we have operation. So let's say, let's say we have this, uh, let's call it a let val equals do op operation. Then we can actually await that. Now let's say val equals await do operation two val, then val equals await do operation three val. And then now the one thing you don't see here is how we're handling errors. So let's do that. With hand with error handling in async await, you can use try catch blocks. So let's try this. And if any of these promises reject during the execution of this, we can catch those errors with a catch block and then console log error. So let's refactor this here to use our get data function to see what this does. Let's log the result of val. Let's uncomment this here, remove this and see what happens. So now you can see that we resolved that promise successfully. So inside our block, we have this. And let's log the word error so that we don't get confused when this rejects. So now this should reject and just log the word error. Now this happens at any point while you're async, while you're awaiting any promise resolution. So this, as you can see, helps flatten out the structure, helps our code read more synchronously while still controlling the flow of that asynchronous code, making applications a bit more simple to debug, a bit simpler to debug, I should say. So that is the essence of async await. Thank you so much for joining me. If you enjoyed this video, please hit the subscribe button below. Thank you.